I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and thanks for joining us. Today we have Kim Thorne Harper, and a delightful young lady, and uh, just thrilled to hear your story, and so appreciate you coming and sharing all the way from North Utah, mm -hmm. right? Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have you. So as we usually do, where, where were you born? Where do you hail from? I was born and left. Um, I was born in Pensacola, Florida. Oh my goodness. Okay. While my dad was going through military flight school in preparation for Vietnam. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Some he was a Marine. Interesting. And how long were you there then? Just short time? Wouldn't even know. Oh. We were born and left and then just moved around to a lot of different places. And bases and stuff uh -huh. around. And did you settle anywhere at all? It was just the first okay. five years of my life, and then they decided that it was a little bit too much, and we started settling down a little bit more in Utah. In Utah? Mm -hmm. In northern Utah then? or Brigham City. Brigham City. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So you haven't wandered too far away from that, I guess, at, at that point. But yeah. anyway, so they were uh, active members, your parents? and Always. What were they? Very Mar devout. Married in the temple and mm -hmm. everything. and. So, and how many children were in your family? There was um, two boys and two girls. I'm the oldest of four. Oldest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess baptized at age eight and do all the normal... The whole trajectory. Primary. Yep, <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, went to, I guess you uh, went to seminary. Mm -hmm. In fact, you mentioned you also went to institute. That was mm -hmm. probably... I did everything. On. Did you? Mm -hmm. So... I guess in retrospect, mm -hmm. and to, and maybe we should introduce you too in a way that you've only been out of the church less than a year. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. So your perspective may be still pretty fresh of what you went, went through and what, what you believed for so long. Mm -hmm. But as you think back in your youth, did you, what, what, how, did, how did you feel about your testimony of the church? and? My testimony was always really strong. I thought it was at least. Yeah. Um, but I was, now I know that I was just, you know, doing, I was just repeating what I had been told, what I've been taught. Really? Mm hmm Is that the plan, do you think, for, for us parents to get our youth kind of processed that way so that when they become an adult, they're still hanging on to those original... Oh, yes. Original... It's, we're indoctrinated since birth, is, yeah, is what I've come it? to know now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we kind of rely on others' testimonies and other things mm -hmm. and... So, Although I really, really strongly felt that it was the one true church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Enough to go on a mission and get married in the temple. Oh, where'd you go on your mission? To Buenos Aires, Argentina. Okay. How was that? It was awesome. Yeah. Loved it. And I've asked this of other return missionaries like yourself. Um, did you sense that you were preaching Jesus when, mm -hmm. on your mission? Absolutely. Or were you preaching the church? I guess is it's kind of a backwards way of asking the question, and, and it may be that you were preaching Jesus, but for me, I was always preaching the church. The church. Yeah, the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. Need for Prophets, Joseph Following Smith. Following the church's agenda, for sure. Yeah, I never mm -hmm. talked about the Bible, never talked Hardly about... Hardly ever, no. I don't very think I little really, talked about Jesus. I don't Jesus. really think that I really knew the Bible. Yeah. It was just kind of there. Yeah, yeah interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think I... Um, yeah, that, that was just my sense that I was mm -hmm. actually, I didn't realize that until years later. But uh, so that was interesting. And you, of course, obviously had a strong testimony preaching and teaching and everything. And mm -hmm. so it was what, an incredible experience. Yeah. So you came, after what happens after your mission? Well, after my mission, I came home and then a series of things happened. My dad passed away in the line of duty. He oh. got killed on the line of duty. And oh, gosh. Our, um, my mom became a widow and our family just kind of fell apart. Oh, dear. And at that time, this was before the Internet, I started writing to my future husband that I had met on my mission. Now that I could say that I was in love with him at the time because I kept, I was very, 
a very good and obedient missionary. Was he Argentinian? Yes. Okay. Yes, he was my ward mission leader, but I couldn't stand the guy. I wanted him in one corner, me in another. Well, you so I had to figure it out and marry him. <laughs> you actually went down there. I went you? down there. Um, I was working for an airline at the time, so the airlines, you know, oh. the flight was pretty cheap, and I yeah. thought I'd go on vacation. We ended up, you know, we had been writing to each other. He, yeah. We confided everything in each other, and it was kind of like those World War II kind of stories where you fell in love, you know, yeah. via letters. Wow. And so it was a spiritual connection more than anything, and we just... It happened fast. And you got married in the temple? We And I brought him up here. Yeah. Brought him back from vacation as a souvenir and got married in the Salt Lake Temple <laughs> against my family's wow. wishes. <laughs> now, you'd already been through the temple, so yes, you yes. were already into that. In, mm -hmm. into that. Uh, anything about the temple that surprised you at all the first time or even at, at, at getting married time? Yeah, I think I came out of the temple with my eyes popping out of my head. Did you? Yeah, I was like... This is bizarre. I looked at my dad with the baker's hat on and thought, oh, oh with the baker's okay. hat. Okay. <laughs> Just thinking, all right, well, I guess it's going to make sense later on. And that's what they told me. And, sure. and they asked me, this is strange to you. And I said, I just had no words except, yep. <laughs> and, and then when I got out of there, not what they you said expected it's good. at all. Then. No, no, not at all. And I was, I think I was in shock. Yeah. And I, just thought this is weird it was overwhelming yeah I, I think it was definitely not what I expected it hadn't been anything that I've been taught and now in retrospect I think well they told me that things would get better with time and they to never understand did it. they never yeah. did I, I asked for answers and I just didn't really want to ever go back to the temple interesting it was the one thing that really bothered me about the church and the one thing that I just think now, now that I've done a lot of studies, yeah. that nobody would voluntarily go into that, they, not knowing what they're getting into, or knowing what they're getting into, they wouldn't voluntarily do something like that. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Did you understand that there was this masonry, masonry connection to, to the temple? Not until and... just a few months ago. Oh, really? Yeah. After 50 years of Mormonism. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, hmm, that's that maybe answers some of the questions. And yeah, well, I I got yeah. more of a sense, I guess, after time. It, it hit me initially that way too, but I kind of sensed more and more. Okay, well, this is what I'm doing, and this is the. But it, I always felt funny about Jesus in the temple, because he just kind of goes and does the errand boy. Uh, yeah, the errand boy kind of thing, mm -hmm. and and then. And it's really not worshiping him at all, of course. It's what we're doing and what we did to get into the temple in the first place. And mm -hmm. Interesting. And you, did your husband feel that way? Had he been through the temple before? Had he been on a mission? No. His father also had passed away, and he had to uh -huh. take care of his family down there. I just think that both of us just obeyed without asking sure. questions at that time. Yeah. And yeah. we just did what we were supposed to do. Yeah. So you end up moving down to Argentina after this, right? And yeah, live down there for 16 years. Yeah, and then uh, and just active. You were, mm -hmm. I know you were a primary teacher and gospel everything. doctrine, and yeah. always played the piano. I guess eternal pianist, do gospel <laughs> doctrine teacher in Spanish. You know, yeah, for five, and about just five years. No question that the church was true. Or no, yeah. not at all. Yeah. Okay, so what happens in life? Well, uh, my husband all of a sudden dies oh. uh, right before what was going to be our best Christmas mm -hmm. in December of 2011. This was after of course, 16 we had two, years. Huh? Mm -hmm, after had two 16 kids? years, he just died all of a sudden, just really traumatically. Oh. And I was forced, and I had my two boys down there, Alan okay. and Dylan. And at that time, I was just forced to, you know, we had our beautiful house down there we had our lives established I had my profession I'm a linguist mm. and it was going really really well of course if you know the if you earn in dollars and and spend in pesos you're going to a lower currency you can live very well we had everything very organized um, but I hadn't been home in 16 years and that's another story in itself but <laughs> um, 
after that, I was forced to rethink what the future of my family would be. And I realized, and I, I did as much soul searching and praying as I could, I realized that it wouldn't be a wise decision for us to remain down there. For security reasons, the country was going into mm -hmm. one of many crises. Another one was heading in. And I just, I just felt like I really needed to reconnect with my family and reconnect with my country, become an American again, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so I, I decided that I would just go back and visit my family. and so um, Bring the boys out, too? Yeah, yeah. So I, we took an investigation trip, and within two days, I told my mom, I want to be here with you. <laughs> and my mom um, was dying, pretty much. Oh. So she was in her last um, few years of life that I didn't know, but she'd been, you know, Struggling to Yeah, and she had dementia even, so oh my gosh. I was lucky that within two months I was able to put my house on sale and get here, which is, in a third world country, epic. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh. so we came up here about six years ago, and, and okay. uh, we're living in South Jordan at the time. Oh, you were? Not mm -hmm. up in Brigham then? Mm -hmm. Is that where your folks were, or your mom That's was? That's where my mom was living at the time. Uh -huh. oh, then she passed, you said? Yeah, I was able to spend the four years with her and take care oh, of her. Oh, nice. So that was a, a, I consider that part of God's plan, is I could actually, you know, be with my mom until the last minute. Yeah. And of course, during this whole time, you're active Latter-day Saint, I guess, going to her her ward and everything? Um, I wouldn't say that. I was becoming disillusioned at that point. Oh. Anything specific that had happened? Or? Yes. Um, I had, um, you know, I had become a widow and I was attending my mom's ward and um, just, I was being treated differently and I wasn't being taken care of is what I saw. Kind of a single mom, of course. A single and, yeah. mom, but very judged because nobody really understood the dynamics of everything that had gone on, and nobody mm. wanted to talk about it either. Gone on in the sense of losing your husband, you mean? Losing my just, husband, and just, you know, 16 just, years had gone by. Yeah, that's okay. A, that's a book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about it, but nobody really wanted to hear what was going on, what had gone on in 16 years, and how life really was. And um, But the fact was, I had lost my husband to a very traumatic um, death and you know I needed to bring my boys here they didn't know English oh yeah of course there was a lot of adjustment yeah I can imagine but who was having the most difficult adjustment was me even more difficult than the boys yeah tell us about that <laughs> so I'm back in Utah and if you've lived in Argentina you know or been visited there in Buenos Aires it's very European it's very uh, Progressive, it's cosmetology, it's like a Paris in the middle of South America. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So it's very different from a lot of people's uh, image of Latin America, and I was teaching English down there. And um, a lot of the people that I would teach were very well-read and very, um, you know, well-traveled. They really knew what was going on. Okay. And so that kept me, you know, going, and it was a very open-minded, very tolerant and acceptable society. So to come back here to Utah, where I was raised, <laughs> for me, after 16 years, felt like I had been boiled alive. <laughs> 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 or cold water or whatever. The ice bucket challenge, I don't care what you want to call it. It was such a, a reverse culture shock for me to come back into this community. And you could sense it. I could feel, I could cut it with a knife. Interesting. The control, the mind control, the the... Lack of openness. Hmm. I I was dying. I just really was not adjusting well. Were you hanging on to your testimony at this point? I mean, did you have a <clears throat> still I, a sense that the church was true, right? Or did yes, you? I yes, that it was true, but it wasn't for me. Oh, okay. I had this sense that I didn't belong there. You were also running into another s unusual situation that I probably have never really thought about. But okay. certainly hits, and that's your dating opportunities. So on. Tell yeah, us about so, that. So um, within a reasonable time, I start to think, well, okay, you know, I'd like to get married again. So I start dating, and um, that was more than interesting. Um, 
I started, you know, dating LDS people, LDS men, excuse me. Sure. <laughs> and and after a while, the relationships start to fizzle out if they're active because they don't want you because you're already sealed to another man. Boy, <laughs> it True struck story. me so much when you when I read that from from your story. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, t tell us more about that. So the relationship progresses to a certain point, and then they make up an excuse why they, they can't continue with. But what it is, is it's, it's the church that you're not able to make a future together with and get married in the temple. Because you can't take a second husband, but a husband could lose a wife and take another wife, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. So after a while, I, <laughs> I just gave up on dating LDS, and, I just, and it, was, it was less complicated you know, with non-LDS because they didn't put all those, you know, <laughs> how should I say? Well, yeah. Things in the middle. And and I, I was, and, and then I was getting, at the same time, I was getting a lot of judgment from who I was dating because why aren't you going to get married? You have no problem dating non-LDS. But they didn't know that it was just a lot more complicated than not. Yeah. So I finally, um, you know, when my mom died, I, I inherited some money and bought a house up mm -hmm. in Logan. And within two months, I met uh, Michael, who's my husband. And, but uh, we were both kind of inactive at the time, so it wasn't a, a big deal. So, so that was, worked out. He was LDS, but he LDS was inactive. LDS, but inactive, and he didn't care about going to any church. He wasn't planning on getting married in the temple or anything. No, so. not at the time. Yeah. And so. it was something that I just really could never resolve. You know, I asked people, I said, you know, what, what do we do in this situation? And my mom, you know, would have been happy. She never liked my husband. She would have been happy to. She says, oh, I can get this marriage unsealed really quickly. But then when I go talk to leaders, nobody had an answer. I even went to the prophet's brother, who I've known my whole life. President Monson's brother. Yeah, Scott it? Monson, who are my friends. And I what said, what is, my, what is my, um, my state of what's going to happen <laughs> to me? Am I able to get married in the temple again? And he had no answer either. And there are no answers. Well, I guess I've never really been faced with this before. Yeah. Is, is it possible to be unsealed to a husband who's passed? Nobody could give me a straight answer. Oh, my goodness. I got all kinds of different things. And I'm like, well, okay, forget about being married in the temple again in LDS. And certainly, like you say, you're certainly not going to be able to date active LDS people right. or men if, if they're interested in having you as a eternal companion. Exactly. So you end up so I kind of going just, either inactive LDS. I or... kind of just said, well, I'll, I'll just be happy, you know, playing the harp. <laughs> <laughs> be one of the I servants, huh, or I something? I don't care. It doesn't really matter to me, yeah. you know. Interesting. I'm okay with just being with God. I hope, you know, yeah. hope I end up with God. At that point, those were my thought. I can just be a ministering angel. It's okay. Really? Because I, I had given up the idea of, of uh, celestial marriage. <laughs> of course, you were married in the temple the first right. time, so there was that potential. Going forward, I, I mean, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. I understand. Well, mm -hmm. that's, that really is uh, kind fair. of surprising. And it isn't fair, is it? Mm -mm. Uh, I wonder if the church has ever... So I got that. thinking, this isn't fair. This is... And the more I learned... I okay, so I'm married to Michael, and of course I I start to. There's a lot of intertwinement here in, in the <laughs> stories. So September of 2017, my son Alan, who's 21, decides that he wants to go on a mission, and I think, okay, I'll go ahead and support you. And he says, but mom, I want to leave from Argentina. And I want to reconnect with my. Um, with my cousins, my family was down there, and it had been like six years, so I said, I think that's a great idea. Hmm. He says, I want to just leave from there. Oh, leave on his leave mission, on his from, mission Argentina. from Argentina. And I said, that's okay. great, you'll get all the support. So I contacted them, and we arranged everything and sent them down. Okay. That was in September. Five days later, I turned 50. Oh, okay. And then I go into full faith crisis. Full what? faith crisis. The Lord, I, I can only see it as the Lord just saying, I'm going to show you what you're a part of, and I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to show you who I am now, the God that you never knew. Wow, what happened? 
um, I started having friends, Christian friends, just come to me and just, just tidbits. And they started showing, well, I, first of all, I, I started studying deep, deeply. I, I started to find out about Joseph Smith, the true history of the church. How, what started that search or that <laughs> curiosity? Do you remember? Yeah, I found out that that he would have been diagnosed with narcissist personality disorder. And I was <laughs> extremely interested in psychology, and I decided I would go back and get my master's in marriage and family therapy. Oh. So I started that last year. Oh, you did? Oh, good. And I started saying, I saw a quote that said, and you can probably help me, where Joseph Smith says that he's he has more to boast with than... <laughs> than any man ever had, and any man including ever had, Jesus. And including Jesus, and I went, what? <laughs> How can you say that you're, you're better than Jesus? Who does that? Yeah. I only remember one other person that I heard that was John Lennon that said he was more famous than Jesus, and he died in his own vomit a month later. Mm. <laughs> so that's not something that you want to be out there saying. Yeah. And I said, who is this person who doesn't even fear God? This is our first prophet. That was enough for me, just knowing that he was—he did not fear God. This could not be the behavior of a prophet to me. So you kind of sense God was leading you along here to oh, absolutely. teach you who he was. And absolutely. So I kept studying, kept studying. What else did you study? Just curious. Well, I found out that Joseph Smith had... Uh, any books, I mean, any books particularly that you... Um, well, I've read a lot of, uh, I've read Unveiling Grace by Lynn Wilder. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Who I actually got to meet. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm, okay. Later on, but that's another story. Um, and I, I read a book by Martha Beck that was really, really uh, powerful. I let, read a lot of stuff. I can't okay. remember all the books no. that I read. So tell me. So but I what watched else a lot of you... your videos too. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes, and they helped. Did it? Oh, good. So we're going along and... Um, I just realize that there's no way with everything that I found that I can continue to be a member of the church any longer. First of all, I was disillusioned. Second of all, I didn't fit in any longer. Nobody seemed to have a solution for my dilemma. Yeah. Um, and I just I felt like I just didn't want to be there anymore. But it was the doctrine that actually I studied myself out of the church. I studied so much. Interesting. That's Found kind the true history. Of, yeah, that's kind of what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Did you have a sense at all that you didn't have a good relationship with Jesus at this point? A hunger. Did you have a hunger? See, when I left, I just thought, okay, the church isn't true. There's something wrong here with the mm -hmm, church. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know until later <laughs> when I really started learning about the Bible and Jesus and grace and those kinds of things mm. that I didn't have a relationship with him that I thought I did. Did you feel like you had that relationship early Within on? Within Mormonism, no. Within no. Mormonism? Maybe a little in my mission because I was on a more higher, I was on a higher spiritual plane. Yeah. Um, but after that, I just th thought, is this all there is to it? Yeah. There's got to be more. It's got to be, and I'm a deep thinker. <laughs> and I'm a highly emotional girl. Yeah. And I was just like, is this all there is to it? There's got to be a lot more. So, you know, I wanted that. I wanted that. And my Christian friends who came out of the woodwork just started helping me. What were they sharing? I have a friend, Carolyn, who, I, who is a new friend of mine. Um, she got connected through another friend that I work with, with through business. I had one conversation with her, and she was describing that one day she had um, found out that her husband was using drugs, and she found herself going into, um, as an agnostic, agnostic, she didn't believe anymore. But one day she found herself face down in the bathroom door, and she just, a floor, and she said, God, are you there? If you're there, I want you to show yourself to me. And he showed up. He showed up and became the biggest part of her life. And she is like this Jesus lover. Yeah. And she talked about Jesus as if he were like this person, like you and I. This strong, intimate relationship and that she would laugh with him. And I'm like, what? I've never heard anybody talk about 
Jesus, to have this a relationship. Never. I mean, yeah. just just unbelievable. And I said, I want that relationship. I want what you have. Uh-huh. And she gave me my first red letter Bible when I went to, you know, my first yeah. congregation before I met you. Actually, what did you think of be- that? Well, that was a praise service with a choir. It was a little bit too hallelujah-ish oh. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I needed something a little bit calmer. But the Red Letter Bible, did you start, jump into that oh, at yeah, all? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It highlights the parts where Jesus talks. You know, that was one of the things in my transition that mm-hmm. I did get a, a Red Letter Bible from, I think, Tuesday morning, that store. Anyway, I started reading just the words of Jesus, just the red. And I all of a sudden realized all the things that he didn't talk about, it, uh, temple marriage and yes. priesthood and, and all those other things. I just, it was shocking to me in a way. I, I guess I kind of knew a little bit, but it just, it was surprising what he didn't talk about and what he did talk about, love and and so on. It was, uh, and forgiveness and Yes, judging. it was a totally different uh, perspective. So going back after I decided that I was going to, you know, leave Mormonism, I took my husband for a drive and said, guess what? <laughs> Would anything change? I think I'm going to leave the church. Would things change with us? Oh. And he, he gave me an answer that I was pretty happy with. He says, well, I didn't marry the church. I married you. Oh, what a sweet thing to say. Okay. Because you know a lot of husbands and wives yes. differ over those kinds of things. and and have challenges. Well, we're getting about out of time. I okay. think we'll probably visit with you a little bit more. We'll okay. do a maybe a second, inter- or finish up with a second interview and just uh, hear a little bit more of your story. You also have a, a, a blog site that you, mm-hmm. and I think we have that hopefully posted on the on the computer, or yeah, mm-hmm. on the mm-hmm. internet That I'm here. writing about my transition from yeah. Mormonism to Biblical Christianity. Yeah. Yes. And moving from a religion to a relationship. Yep. And hasn't it been that? It's been joyful, I'll bet, huh? I didn't know that I could experience the joy that I have experienced. I'll tell you some, just a little tidbit. I've always suffered, you know, a little bit from depression my whole life. It's something I inherited. Yeah. And once I left and I, and I came over to, you know, Christianity, that is gone. I feel true joy in my life. I go to church. I really want to go to church. My boys really want to go to church. Joy. Isn't that, isn't that fun? Joy. So different than... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yes. Anyway, we're just about out of okay. time, and I guess we'll uh, pick this up next time. So I'm not quite sure where we're at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Kim, it's, it's really a pleasure, and you, you, you tell such a great story. I hope people will read your, your entire story. It's several... Uh, documents of, mm-hmm. of of the journey that you've been on, and you've got more to come, right? You're, yeah, oh, yes. You're going to be do, adding more to those blog spots and mm-hmm. stuff. So, anyway, we, as we have said before, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith, perhaps the ULDS, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think we agree with that. We'll see you next time. <laughs>